and welcome. Today we're going to be going over how you can create a Zenfee flow that can automatically generate a Google Doc that needs to be approved and once approved send via email. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step to any Zenfee flow is to set up the trigger which is the action that's going to initiate the workflow process. In this case we're going to be using the Google Form trigger meaning it's going to start the flow whenever a Google Form response is submitted. To be able to configure your trigger, all you have to do is set up a connection. This is going to grant Zenfee permission to be able to access the Google Form responses. To do that, all you have to do is click on the plus icon to create a new connection. You can give it a name, select if it's private or shared. And once you click on authorize, you'll be able to select your account. Once you have created the connection, you're going to be able to click on this Google Drive icon here. And this will allow you to select which Google Form you wish to use for your trigger. When selected, you'll be able to see all the fields from the form here, as well as their type. The first action that we're going to be using is this one called Generate Document Using Template. Now the first step that you have to do is set up your connection once again, so repeat the process, create a new connection, select your account, and you're going to have to generate a template for it to be able to edit. Now as the name of the action states, we're going to be using a template and then inserting information from their Google Form response. So in this case, this template file is going to be the file that you're going to be using as a template. This is my file where we're going to be inserting their first name, last name, their start date, and their title. So wherever you wish to insert information, you must indicate the placeholder. To do that, all you have to do is put the name of the word that you wish to replace around two curly brackets. And this will let Zenfi know exactly where to replace the information. To select the file, once again, you're just going to click on the Google Drive icon and you can select the Google Doc that will be used as your template. After that, we have to give it a destination folder ID, meaning what folder is it going to save this file in. So once again, use the Google Drive icon, select a folder where you wish to save, and then you can give the new document a file name. In this case, as you can see here, I used their first name, dot last name, underscore approval letter. If you wish to insert information from previous steps, you can use this icon here. This chain icon is the token picker which allows you to insert data from previous steps. So if you click here, you'll be able to see information from the form response. So if you wish to use their first name, last name, or any other information from their response, you can do so here. All you have to do is click on add token. This action also gives you the possibility to generate HTML or to generate a PDF. Now in this case, since we do want the document to be approved before generating the PDF, I will not be turning on this option. Down at the bottom, we're going to be able to see the placeholders inside of the template document. If you don't see yours, all you have to do is click on load placeholders and they should appear. Now all you have to do is indicate the value that it's going to be inserting in each one of the placeholders. In this case, since we're using dynamic data for each one of the responses, we're going to be using the token picker and inserting the information here. So here we put the first name, the last name, start date, and the title. Just make sure that you have the same name here, so you're inserting the correct information. The next action we have here is called assign task. This is going to be used to be able to review the document. You can give the task a name as well as a description. Once again, I use a token picker to be able to put their first name and last name. By default, this action comes with two outcomes, which is approve or reject. You can remove them and edit them in any way that you need. In this case, all I'm putting is done so that once they finish reviewing, all they have to do is click on done. Here we're able to edit how the email will appear, so you can add a sender display name. You'll also indicate who will be receiving the email, so you would put the email of whoever is going to be reviewing your documents. We're going to be using my email for task purposes. You can add a subject and a body. And as you can see down at the bottom, I did add the link to be able to view the doc. So to add that, all you have to do is click on the token picker, and in the Generate Employee Letter action, if we scroll down at the bottom, there is a view link so you can add that so that they can edit the Google Doc. Feel free to also set up an expiry date and reminders. This is going to allow you to be able to remind them to complete the task if they have not clicked Done yet. The next action that we're going to be using is called Export Docs. This is going to be used to export the document in PDF once they have made any changes that they need. So once you set up your connection, you're going to have to use a source file, meaning which file we're going to be exporting. So to be able to do that, we're going to click on this icon here, and we're going to use the ID of the generated document file. 
Now, what is going to be the output folder ID? This is going to be the folder where you wish to save the document. Then we have the output file name, meaning the file of your new document with the new format. I'm going to be saving it with the exact same name as before. So to do that, all you have to do is go to the generate employee letter. And I'm going to be using the file name that we used previously for the Google Doc. In export type, you're able to use different formats if needed. I'm going to be exporting as a PDF. And remember, it will be exporting it until they click on done so that they can make all their changes if necessary. Once they click done and the document is in its final form, now it will go through and export it in PDF form. Now the last step that we have is a send email action. So this is going to be used to send the final PDF to the person. Now to do that, first you set up your connection like with all the actions. You're going to select who the email is for. In this case, I'm going to select the person who submitted the Google form. To be able to do that, all you have to do is click on the trigger using the token picker and select initiator email. Again, you can edit the sender display name, you can add a subject, and add any text you need in the body. Now, last but not least, I'm going to add an attachment, which is going to be the exported PDF that I just created. So we're going to click on the token picker, and it would be the exported document. So let's go ahead and do a test run. You're going to save, click test run, select a form response to start, and we're going to click this one, click on start. It has generated the letter, and now it has been sent for review. So we're going to go ahead and open our email. This is what the email that they are going to be receiving would look like. As you can see, it has a link to the doc, so we're going to open it. Okay, and let's say that they messed up here. They're not the new CEO, they're the new doctor. So I made that change. I'm going to go back to my email, click on done. We can see that now it's exporting the PDF and sending it via email. Okay, and here we have the final email. As you can see, it has the name of the person. And if we open up the document, it did make the changes. Now it says the new doctor, and it has all the information from their Google Form response. And that would be everything. Remember, you can make your flow as simple or complex as necessary, so feel free to add as many actions as you need for your process. You can check out our YouTube channel where you'll be able to look at other use cases using different triggers, different actions, so you can learn how to automate different processes. Thank you so much for watching.